to Get Outside St. Tammany. I'm Diane Barth. I'm a refuge ranger with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and I'm located at the Southeast Louisiana National Wildlife Refuges Complex in Lacombe, Louisiana. And I'd like to let everybody know about a couple of wonderful uh, things that we've got going on. The first being that our annual celebration of National Wildlife Refuges Week is coming up on Saturday, October 12th. And an integral part of that for the last 21 years has been the Wild Things Youth Art Contest and Exhibition. The art contest is an opportunity for youth to spotlight native wildlife and their habitats that are found on Louisiana refuges. And hopefully in doing this, the students will engage in nature, basically through art. So it's an excellent opportunity. It is open to all youth, ages five through 18. There are five age groups, beginning with five and ending with 18, and two mediums, which are drawing and painting. So that said, the, the main rules of the contest are that the art must be native wildlife, which means that it is from this area originally, or that it's indigenous. So no exotic species are permitted. Um, so that's a very, very important rule. That's probably the main rule um, that I want uh, to stress, to emphasize. And um, there's a couple other rules. I'm going to show you some examples. This art is done on canvas, okay? If it is done on canvas, you do not have to mat it. Mat it. However, it is a requirement for art, flat art that's drawn or painted not on canvas to be matted but not framed. So it's important that there's not a, a solid frame put on the art. So this is an example of a piece of art depicting native wildlife. We've got our American alligator here and a egret, a great egret here in a swamp scene. And again, it's got its nice job of matting. It's for, and I wanna to say too that it can be very simple. The matting can be really simple. So for younger grades, for example, um, here we have a bald eagle, and it can be as simple as a construction paper background. So it doesn't have to be elaborate, but the border's important because we're gonna be displaying the art in a big show on, at Wild Things on October 12th, and it will be mounted. So here's another example of a younger student's piece of art, and again, you can see they just used a simple construction paper background. So you can be as simple or as elaborative as you want with your matting, but once again, no solid frames, please. The deadline for art to be received this year is Friday, September 27th, and it has to be delivered by 4 p.m. that day. Uh, I'm gonna, you'll find information below about where it can be, it can be hand mailed or sent to the art contest at my attention. You'll see the information below. There's also, we also have a link to the rules, the entry forms, and a partial resource list, which you will be able to also find at the link below. And so we just uh, hope to get a lot of wonderful art from the students uh, in St. Tammany Parish. They can be public, private, homeschooled, any, anybody qualifies. The art will be featured on October 12th in a big exhibition, um, and it will, Prior to that, it will have been judged. Okay, so we will have first, second, third, and honorable mention winners in every category. And we'll have a, an honors, a little honors ceremony for those on the Day of Wild Things. So I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that! That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret does make you smile. Why mm -hmm. the sources say the chicken mm -hmm. soup has proved has found their way out of this
closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Get Outside St. Tammany. The other thing I'd like to share is that we have a very uh, we have a very special visitor center located on our headquarter grounds at 61389 Highway 434 in Lacombe, Louisiana, which is where the Wild Things event will be taking place and the Wild Things Youth Art Contest. And we are seeking volunteers, volunteers for our, to help keep our visitor center running ex in an excellent way as it is now. We uh, are open Thursday through Saturday. Regular hours are 9 to 4. And there are two shifts that we're seeking help with. So the AM shift is from 9 to 12.30. The PM shift is from 12.30 to 4. So we're looking for individuals who are interested in greeting visitors who come into the center. So we have lots of people from all over the United States and even out of the country, as well as locals, who are coming in to learn about the wonderful eight refuges that we manage out of the office. We have all kinds of very interesting interactive exhibits and activities for youth as well as adults. And we just would like to get the information out and share it with more of the public. And so we're seeking individuals who would like to be a part of that. Volunteers should be 18 or older and enjoy working with the public. You're gonna be our first greeters to meet the public, very important. And in, interested in learning about other people that come in, as well as sharing all of the excellent information that we have about our local resources on the National Wildlife Refuges. And we'll see you next month. throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret Do you smile? Why mm -hmm. the sources say that chicken mm -hmm. soup has proved has found their way out of this. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Hi, I'm Rob Bourgeois, and this is Get Outside St. Tammany. I am Wildlife and Fisheries Aquatic Species Coordinator, and I'm here today to talk to you about golden apple snails, which you may see out when you're out in St. Tammany Parish. These apple snails get to be about the size of an apple. They are smaller sometimes. You will see pink egg clusters out, out when you're out and about on the side of pylons, grasses, and cypress knees. This is an invasive species from South America. It impacts Louisiana waters by eating vegetation and that removes the habitat for our native fish and uh, crawfish. These uh, apple snails, um, we don't have a way of treating to, to stop their spread right now. And so if you want to help with that, you can scrape the eggs into the water. Um, that should kill the eggs if they're um, young enough. And if you do that, there is a chance that they carry a parasite. So we ask that if you do that, please be careful, wash your hands, don't let your kids play with them. The adults, um, it's called rat lungworm. It can affect you if you eat them or ingest them in any way. And the eggs are thought to have a neurotoxin. If you do encounter them out in the wild, you can let us know. We do know they're in St. Tammany Parish. Basically, they're all across the state and anywhere, um, all parishes south of I-12 and I-10. They do extend a little bit further towards the um, eastern side of the state. Um, 
We really don't need to know every drainage they're in. We know they're in most parishes and they are spreading. They do spread through flooding and they've been known to uh, show up in people's yards after large rainstorms. Currently there's no plan to get, we don't have anything we can use to treat them. The poisons that are available would be toxic to crawfish and native fish. So right now we're just waiting to see if another poison comes along in the market that we can use to treat these. If you do have uh, any questions or find some apple snails somewhere, please call us. Our Aquatic Nuisance Species Hotline is 225-765-3977, or you can email us at aquaticinvasives at wlf.la.gov. So I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. But it would be safe to keep your distance until they're not secret. Do you smile? Why mm -hmm. the sources say that chicken soup has proved has found their way out of this year. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to another edition of uh, Get Outside St. Tammany. My name is Will Afton and I work with the LSU Ag Center here in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, if you ever have a lawn, garden, or landscaping question, feel free to drop by or give us a call and uh, you know, let us know. We're here to provide research-based information to the people of St. Tammany Parish. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about using mulches in the garden. Uh, mulches do a lot of things for us. Mulches, uh, they, number one, they suppress weeds. Uh, number two, they actually help retain moisture, which is very important right now during the summer months when it's so hot outside and we go through dry periods. That layer of mulch will actually help keep some water in the soil available to those plants. It also helps with preventing water runoff and also soil erosion by covering the soil. Uh, one of the other very interesting things mulches do is they actually help insulate the soil. So. By shading the soil in the long hot days of summer, it keeps it cool. And then in the winter time, it'll actually help to hold moisture or hold temperature in the soil and keep it a little bit warmer uh, so that we don't have freezing temperatures to our delicate root systems. Uh, one reason why people love using mulch is it, it's like icing on the cake. It has a nice, beautiful, finished look to it. Uh, and you'll see here just in a second all the different colors and textures that we can get out of mulch. And then lastly, my favorite reason to use mulch in the landscape is it's an organic product. And if you think of how the, uh, you know, the fallen leaves on the forest floor operates, you know, those leaves every year, they're gonna break down, decompose, they're gonna release nutrients back into the soil. So using uh, a mulch layer in the garden can kinda, it's somewhat, you can, you can recycle nutrients in the garden. So let's, uh, let's see what I brought today here for examples of mulch. Uh, when you go to the garden center these days, there's actually, you'll see quite a few options and, and it might actually be overwhelming the amount of options that you have. Uh, but I come from the standpoint that any mulch is a good mulch. Any organic mulch product will work for you. However, you're going to have several different colors to choose from and you'll have several different textures. So let's go through a few examples here. Uh, just first off, you know, St. Tammany Parish. Uh, we're known, or we were known for our giant pine savannas. Uh, we grew a lot of longleaf pine you know, years ago. Now we have a fairly big forestry industry, 
uh, we grow loblolly pine, but pine straw is a great mulching product and there's actually several uh, producers there. We can actually get local pine straw in St. Tammany Parish. There's a local vendor out of Mandeville that sells a lot of pine straw to the whole state of Louisiana and the Gulf South. So think of that. That's, pine straw has a very, very fine texture. Uh, you, sometimes you get a little rusty color, a little brownish color. Uh, anyway, excellent mulch and it's very common throughout the whole parish. I would say this is probably the most common mulch that I see driving around looking at landscapes in St. Tammany. Uh, just back up to the top here, you got several different kinds. Uh, you know, I kind of mentioned growing pine trees in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, well, they, we all kind of have a little secondary industry. Those pine trees are cut, they're sent to the mill, and they have to be stripped of their bark uh, before they can cut those boards. So what do they do with all that pine bark uh, left over at the mill? Well, uh, a lot of it is used in the mulch uh, in the mulch industry. So right here, this is just regular pine bark mulch. Uh, it's just, it's the strip bark of a pine tree, you know, before it gets cut into logs. Uh, very common mulching product. Uh, probably the second most common mulch that I see out there today. Uh, this one here, as you can see, this red color, that is unnatural. These are hardwood chips. So these are gonna be, uh, you know, probably various oak trees. Uh, uh, you know, maybe city, certain municipalities uh, when they go through and they, uh, you know, do large tree jobs on the street trees. Uh, all these things get taken back. They're grinded up into, you know, wood chips using a wood chipper or a mulching machine. And uh, this product here is then at, there's a dye added to it. This one happens to be a red color, uh, but you can also, I've seen a lighter brown, a darker brown. I've seen a black color and uh, I've even seen a, a line of mulches called sports mulch, where you could get your own sports team's colors in, uh, in, your, in, the, in your flower bed as mulch. Uh, this one here, so we talked about pine straw mulch. That's the whole needle. There's not much processing to that. They gather pine straw, bale it up. However, this one here, this is what we call uh, pine needle mulch. And basically, it's pine straw that's been chopped up a little bit. So, uh, you know, trying to mulch around your smaller herbaceous plants. Pine needle mulch is usually a little bit easier to work with. Uh, you can kind of fill up those, those tight spaces. And this mulch here is actually, there's a, it's actually coated with the color. So this is pine straw that's been uh, colored. So this one has a real, uh, a much more brown-like appearance. Uh, anyway, a lot of technology in the mulch business. And this last one here, this is uh, what we call cypress mulch. This is actually grade A cypress mulch. So this, uh, this mulch here, it was, uh, this is the bark of a cypress tree. You get that nice chocolatey brown. Uh, it's a shredded product, so it mats down really well. If you've ever had a mulch uh, kind of float away on you when the uh, rains came, grade A cypress mulch does not do that because it mats so well. It stays in place. Uh, as you can see here, I mean, this is, this is common at a lot of the stores here. Uh, so basically, it's kind of, any of these organic mulches are fine. Just let's find one that you know works with your color scheme or whatever uh, you know whatever patterns you have going on in the landscape. Now, when it comes to actually mulching the plants, we're looking for a two to four inch layer of mulch to cover the soil directly above the root zone. Now, how wide you go is going to depend on how big that that plant happens to be. Uh, when planting trees, I always recommend using a mulch layer. Uh, to cover that root zone and larger trees have larger areas to be mulched. Uh, you can mulch all the way out to the drip line of your backyard shade tree. Uh, however, uh, you know, do whatever fits in your scheme and looks proportional in your yard. But, you know, you're looking to use two to four inches of mulch to cover the soil. If we go too much, we can cause problems. Uh, we actually have a term, we call it volcano mulching. So you want to stay away from the practice of mulching really high on the trunks of trees or smothering your plants and shrubs in the landscape. Uh, you, essentially, you hold moisture on the trunks of those plants and then we get a fungus to break down, cause a crown rot, and you know, we kind of get slow decline of that plant. So we stay away from volcano mulching, you know, pull it away. So give that trunk some airspace, uh, create your two to four inch layer of mulch, and uh, you know, we're probably gonna freshen it up once, maybe twice a year. You'll notice some of these products, like the pine straw, breaks down a lot faster. Uh, you know, we might come back three times a year if we're looking for a real clean finished look. But most of these bark mulches, uh, you know, once in the spring and then maybe once again in the fall should keep up a nice appearance. Uh, look, mulches are great. Mulches can uh, make or break the landscape. Uh, 
they definitely, uh, they definitely help us out. They kind of ease the plant stress out there. So use mulches in your landscape for the best success. Uh, for more information, feel free to contact us at the LSU Ag Center, our website, the www.lsuagcenter.com. Uh, we have all of our online publications uh, available in digital format for you to, to download, read, and, and use, and learn about plants in the landscape. You can also find information uh, from our local Louisiana Master Gardener group, www.stmastergardener.org. We have, a, few, we have a, a couple of events coming up that you might find interesting. Uh, Thursday, September 19th at the Slidell, uh, Slidell Branch Library, uh, we're going to have an, an herb festival. So we're going to have an event where we'll have speakers talk and we'll have master gardeners providing educational booths, answering questions to the public. Uh, the topic is on herb growing. We have an herb display garden out there. It's going to be a fun time. That's going to be Thursday, September 19th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Come see us there. Uh, we also are going to have an event on Friday, September 27th. This is our annual uh, St. Tammany Master Gardener Association Fall Seminar. This year we're going to be uh, featuring uh, the nationally, nationally known garden author, Mr. P. Allen Smith. Uh, there is an entry fee involved, but check out that website, stmastergardener.org, for information on how to, how to apply, how to, how to get a, a, a ticket to go there. And then lastly, on September 28th, that's the last Saturday in September, uh, we're going to host the annual, the sixth annual Folsom Fall Garden Festival, where we have a lot of the wholesale growers from the Folsom, Amy, and Franklinton area come down and actually sell to the public. Uh, I'll host a booth there where I'll answer questions from the public. You can talk to these wholesale growers and you can buy some of these locally produced plants so you can put them in your landscape. Uh, so anyway, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact us and uh, have a good day outside.